In this tutorial we will look at the VRGS demo data sets. If you don't have the demo data set you can find it through the online help system so go to help, go to online help and it will take you to the VRGS science web page and the online help system and you can find the tutorial demo data set at the bottom of the main page so you can download that to your hard disk and extract it from the zip file so once extracted go to open navigate your way to the VRGS demo project and open the VGP file Depending on which version of the project file you've got, it will ask you if you want to reload point clouds. We'll just say yes, and in this version, in this project, it's reloading all of my point cloud data set. So if I go to the data tab, I can look at the individual point clouds here. I'm going to switch them off or on as is necessary. So I'm going to work on color pre rift 2. navigation in the 3D window it is left mouse button to rotate the model right mouse button translate in and out both mouse buttons or middle mouse button if you've got one to translate left and right and up and down and shift and the left mouse button rotates the model along the direction you're looking which allows you to level the data set when you've been doing lots of um, manipulations in the 3D view. So our first task is to look at the attributes for pre-rift 02. We can expand the attributes folder in the data tab and we can switch between looking at en intensity and the red, green and blue color channels. As we look at the different attributes we see a histogram a histogram for them appear in the histogram tab. We can do a contrast stretch on the data, in this case the intensity data, and we can change the color map as well if we wish. Now the intensity data is of limited use, so we're going to generate some other attributes. So I'm going to go to right click on the point cloud, attributes, tensor analysis, and select all the output parameters and just accept the default values and increase the octree level by one. This will speed up the processing. So the processing is complete and we now have some extra attributes. We have observations, eigenvalues, dip, azimuth, coplanarity, among others. So let's look at coplanarity. This tells us how flat the data in the point cloud is over a certain area. And that was the search sphere radius that was set in the attribute analysis dialog. We can go to our histogram and look at the distribution here. Again, we can clip the data and we can change from a grayscale color map to a spectrum and start to highlight areas of high coplanarity, so areas that are planar. These areas will be things like bedding planes, fracture planes, and in a lot of cases here it's the scree slopes. Once we've got our attributes, we can then go on to triangulate this data set. So I'm going to right click operations triangulate and I'm just going to accept the default values and this will create a mesh from the point cloud data set. If you look in your data tab you'll see a triangular meshes folder. A new tin triangulated irregular network has appeared in that folder and we have a process bar that's telling us how much has been completed of the process. If we select the object, the mesh, 
and look in the properties tab it shows us in more detail how much of the process has been completed. So the triangulation process has been completed. That process will take usually a, a few minutes to run. Let's switch off our point data sets and now we see the triangulated mesh. So instead of being individual points we have a solid surface. We can look at the mesh properties, go to mesh structure and do a show mesh and then we can look at the triangles in detail and see how the points have been linked together to form the mesh data. All of the attributes that we generated on the point cloud have been translated across into the mesh data so we can still look at all of those. So let's try that. We'll go to mesh structure, switch off the mesh and we can look at say a coplanarity attribute on a mesh. The same histograms are found for the mesh data as they are for the point cloud attributes. Let's have a look at a little bit of interpretation. There's some nice flat surfaces, fracture planes, on this exposure here. So I'm going to go into my interpreter, interpretations tab, click three points using the dip azimuth tool and that gives us a measurement so I can see that that fracture plane is dipping at 88 degrees towards 101. So it's very steep. We can interpret polylines so we'll interpret a horizon going round here so we just click the points on the horizon that we're interested in double click to finish and the surface is extruded in and out of the outcrop data so we can see the position of our interpreted line easily we can use a similar measurement approach for measuring the orientation of a bed as we did for the fracture plane so now we've got a dip of three degrees towards 1.9 we can also interpret a fault now there's a fault that runs down through this part of the data set here so select some points double click to finish and there's our fault plane all of the interpretations appear in the interpretations tab under their relevant folders selecting them brings up the properties so from this we can see here fault 2 has a dip of 54 degrees and an azimuth of 188.2 and that's a average best fit plane for the points that have been interpreted for that fault. If we go back to our data tab and go back to our point cloud we'll look at some filtering just to finish off. Take our point cloud, click on it in the data tab, look in its properties and we find filters we can set filters for coplanarity so I'm going to use a filter and show values greater than 4 so this is just now displaying the high coplanarity values within the data set I'm also going to put a filter in to remove these dips that are the dips of the scree slopes so let's add a filter, use filter and only show values greater than 45 degrees. And We're starting to filter out the irrelevant data and just leaving the surfaces that represent fracture planes and there's some other noise in there as well. So we can very easily start to filter data. 
That was a very quick overview of the VRGS demo data sets. If you would like more information, please visit the VRGeoscience website, www.vrgeoscience.com, where you can find more information and more tutorials on using VRGS. Thank you very much.